Up here, it rains all the time. Lake Hermione is like a great big saucer. It collects all the water from the surrounding mountains. It tilts at one end, and that is the beginning of the Franklin River. Water up this high is very clear. Lower down, it's the color of weak tea. That's the tannin the water picks up from the button grass. The Franklin is one of the last big rivers in Australia, virtually untouched by man. No dams or locks, or drains emptying into it. I'm traveling down the river, from Lake Hermione right down to the sea. My field is botanizing. I'm collecting various plants, some of which grow only along this river and its tributaries. Plants that have adapted only to this environment. A sense of excitement is always there when you travel the southwest. Because the region has not yet been fully explored of its botany content, there is still a lot of scope left, probably for generations to come. Being 52 and... Uh, traveling this way, I don't regard myself as a special person whatsoever. I am intensely curious. It's a sort of uh, creative preoccupation. Collecting and uh, cataloging all the plants, which I lodge at the Tasmanian University and Herbarium for studying and, and adding to the knowledge of that region. When you get on this river, you're more or less committed to see it through. If you like, it's a one-way highway through the southwest wilderness. The exits are mostly terribly difficult to get out through. So, you've got to be committed. There's no turning back.
I first read about the Tasmanian Southwest in a school book when I was a boy in Romania. And I was fascinated with the idea of an area completely untouched by man. Even then I wanted to come out here to live. In Europe, of course, there is hardly any wilderness area left. I wouldn't say I was infatuated with my own company. I'm not a loner by nature, although I do live alone. But in my botanizing work, I got to have time to look wherever the fancy takes me, which may not suit others. So over the years, I travel by myself. I do not set out to conquer nature, to subdue it. I want to be part of it, to survive within it. I have no desire to overcome the river. There is nothing in me which expresses itself in a challenge. That Huon pine sapling which in winter is submerged under swirling floodwaters, that little tree is anything from three to four hundred years old. It is very resilient. It bends with the river. of the wilderness is not escapism, but to satisfy my curiosity, to see nature as it was created from the beginning. Here, everything is the same as it was for thousands of years. Creation is portraying itself without any outside influences. I don't believe in a god as such, to me, nature is, in a sense, eternal existence. Uh, some people might call that God. I personally cannot separate things. I see God in nature. And uh, as I'm part of nature, I'm part of God also.
In my spare time from my job, which is house painting, I always traveled the southwest. And finding very little was known of the botany here, I set about learning it myself. I know the names in Latin of 400 native plants in Tasmania, and I'm familiar with two to three thousand others. I do not swim very well. So the worst thing is to be tippled out of your raft and possibly driven under a log or rock by the force of the water. This happened here recently to a man who drowned. You got to be extra careful and keep your head. You cannot allow your emotions to override what you are facing up to. Fortunately, I can carry in the raft one set of dry clothes for the night time. They stay dry because I wrap the clothes in a strong plastic bag. And I put the bag inside another, and the second inside a third one. And this is the same with my sleeping bag. And the same also with my food, for that matter.
Uh, we're three miles up the river now, folks. Um, we're just about ready to go through what's known as the first gorge in the Gordon River, and uh, we go through a series of these gorges for the rest of our trip upstream. Uh, the biggest percentage of timber that grows through this area is myrtle, and that's about uh, 70%. Uh, this is also the home of the Huon Pine, which is our world-famous boat-building timber. Two and a half miles uh, above uh, where we are now, folks, is the Franklin River. Uh, the Franklin flows into the Gordon River about two and a half miles above here. Uh, over on the right there, folks, uh, uh, the rafter you can see there on the right, uh, he's one of the many rafters that come down the Franklin River every year. And uh, this last few years in this area, we've seen quite a lot of canoeists and rafters. Uh, they all come down this river. Uh, the Franklin, of course, is uh, recognised as one of the wildest and roughest rivers in Australia and it's uh, 164 kilometres long, this river, and it uh, rises out of a small lake up around Mount Hugel and, of course, that river flows into the Gordon three miles above where we are now. that we've just picked up, he's, uh, he's just taken three weeks, he tells me, to come down the Franklin River. It's a very beautiful trip down the Franklin, some uh, very rugged, beautiful country, some of the most picturesque country in the southwest of Tasmania through that river there. But the uh, Hydroelectric Commission of Tasmania plans to build a dam just this side of the mouth of the Franklin River. And of course, with that dam across the width of the Franklin, this will uh, completely flood very big areas of the Franklin River and uh, so destroy forever a very unique river country here in the uh, southwest of Tasmania. Now, some of you folk down there, if you'd like to move on to the top deck, uh, just make a little bit of room for the folk who haven't had lunch yet, and as soon as you're all down there and seated, the girls will start serving the second sitting. Thanks. Oh, by the way, uh, we should be back at the wharf at about... Uh, Around about 3 o'clock and uh, the tourist bus will be there to meet you now. Thanks. <laughs>